All right, so let's go on to video two. Um, and I readjust my screen here so you can see a little bit. Hopefully you can see all you need to see. You see a little bit about what's happening um, in terms of which icon you use. Now this is my programming environment, but if you're going to always use the CC icon here. So we'll click on that. And again, it'll look exactly the same as when we were running it a minute ago out of a programming environment. Let's click an event we've already done. And let's talk about um, primarily the Meet Info page. Okay. Um, the Meet Info page you know, has time, weather, which sport, that's huge, cross country, Nordic ski, uh, you, you know, but that'll all be preset. And we've talked about the fact that, you know, that this is going to be, um, this is going to, there's going to be a lot of the same things going on here. Here's a difference you have teams in, in, in the CC Meet. We have 17 male teams and 17 female teams, and they're listed there. You have races, and you can see how many people are, reg are assigned to each race. 99 in the var boys' varsity, 84 in the girls' varsity, and again, there's a total of 183. If you need to look at do anything with the roster, uh, you simply go to the roster info, click on a team, and you'll see their participants. Now, if you want to edit, you can edit. Okay, you can edit the roster. So there are two components here. There's a team's roster and a team's lineup. A team's roster is everybody on the team, okay? And if they come up and say, you know, Kaisha's name is spelled wrong, we can fix that, and that's not a problem. Sometimes they say such and such isn't on the roster, but if you go to the archives, if you include the archives, you'll see that they, maybe they are, okay? And, and the reason we have archives is because if a coach, well, kids graduate every year. We don't want to delete those kids because that will delete their results from the system. But the coach doesn't have to wade through them either. So we archive anybody that's grade 13 or higher. Or maybe a kid came out last year, is not this year. They can archive them. They can go ahead and archive that kid. Now, at this point, you can't add to the roster. Um, that's got to change, and it will change. But right now, we still can't add to the roster on site. That has to be done after the fact. If someone says, look, such and such isn't here, and I want to run John Doe, but he's not in our roster, I would say, look, we can change that later. Go ahead and run somebody else with that bib, or run him with that bib, uh, enter him as someone that's on the roster, and we'll make that change later. We'll, we'll change so that it'll, you know, he'll get a performance. It'll just be under someone else's name until we get back, add him to the roster, and then and then switch it over to him. Okay? Again, that does need to change, and we will change it. Now, that's the roster. And then we have race assignments. Okay? And if you click the school name, you can see that these are the people that are entered in the, in the girls' varsity. Now, actually, I should use another race here so you can get a better idea of what happens when you've got more than one boys' race or one girls' race. So let's go to new meet, and let's go to uh, one of the conference meets we did. So let's go to the Mississippi A Championships. So let's go to race assignments. Notice that there's uh, more races. There's boys 7th and 8th, boys JV, boys varsity, girls 7th and 8th, girls JV, girls varsity. Since I selected a girls team, it obviously only populated that. If I select a boys team, the opposite is true. Um, you almost never need this display. Uh, you can, but let's, you know, what you typically want to be able to do is to switch people from race to race uh, or or move people to, um, or to, to add someone to a race that's not in there. And that can be done. We absolutely, like, like Carson Bisbee is not entered in a race. He's a ninth grader. If we wanted to add him, we could add him. Just click that and click Add to Race. Done deal. Okay? Not a problem. Okay, but that's taking someone who's already on the roster and adding them to a race. That's different than adding them to the roster. Okay? Um... And finally then, of course, when you add someone to a race, you have to assign them a bib. Now, the bib range should be here, and it looks like I need to make that a little bit bigger, so hopefully I won't forget that because you do want to see those bibs. But uh, in, in cross-country running, there's really never a team bib range. You just have a beginning bib and an end bib, and, and the bibs that haven't been assigned are right here. So if I click, if I want to add somebody to a you know, to a, give somebody a bib. I just assigned Carson Bib Bisbee to a race, but I didn't give him a bib. And that happens here. And, you know, you have your options. I mean, you can give him the first available bib, which would seem to make sense. Assign this. Done. Okay. Um, but, you know, 
taken some from the roster, put them in a race, then you also have to give them a bib number. And that happens on assigned bibs. So race assignments, select the team, open the window, Carson Bisbee, add to the race, go to assign bibs, select that team, and give that person a bib. That's all you really have to do on this screen. That's all you really have to do. Okay? Um, the RFID screen, you know, um, you'll notice I'm getting nothing. Must not have used this, uh, this system. So let's see if we use 106. Refresh raw results. There's not where we used 106 either. All right. Now the other option is that I don't even have it in. It, if, I, if I didn't time it, then the uh, then the results are probably not even on my computer, but they're in Dropbox, so I could go get them if I wanted to. A long story short, very much the same. Okay. Um, enter results. Same old, same old. You know, we talked about this a little bit. Make sure you enter your race delays. I've made that mistake where, you know, uh, you know, obviously that looks like the girls' 73 race started first, so there was no race delay. But you know, jo Jonah Brewer didn't take 30 minutes and 34 seconds to run the race. He finished after 30 minutes and 34 seconds after the time had elapsed from the beginning of the meet. But his race started 19 minutes and 43 seconds late, so that gave him this time. So you got to enter your race delay. You, you usually won't have an individual delay. Um, and you'll notice that as the meet goes on and on, the race delays get bigger because races start, you know, a lot later. Okay. Uh, otherwise, just override RFID, and you just take it from there. Um, upload. There's two. Pla there's several places to upload. You can. Oh, let's not forget this. Go to Team Results should always refresh scores, which I think I just screwed that up now because I don't have any data in here. Uh, we'll see. Doesn't matter. Refresh grid. Nope. We're okay. And then if we want to upload to server, whether it's this button or whether it's this button or whether it's this button, they all generate the same display. Okay, so there's just quick, different ways to get at the upload depending on, you know, what you're looking at at the time. But you, you you have to select individual team or both. Typically, you'll do both. You'll have to do select the race you can upload, and then um, upload. And I let's see if that throws an error because that's a brand new utility that I just did. Boys seven and eight. Oh, worked apparently. Let's see if we have any boys seventh and eighth grade uh, results for this meet um, online. Um, so go to go for state events. Results. Now these are school events. In this case, it's cross country running. And let's go to the uh, was it Mississippi eight, wasn't it? And there's our boys seventh and eighth. So certainly it uploaded the team, and it uploaded the individual. So there we go. Now I noticed something. Um, let's check something out here. Um, what's the deal with Jonah Brewer? Jonah Brewer supposedly ran 1050, but Jonah Brewer, oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, 1050. That's good. Okay, my mistake. All right. Now, there's a couple of things to look at here. Sometimes a kid will run the course short or whatever, and and you'll have to DQ them. The best way to do this is click Manage DQs. Let's say Jonah Brewer did. His bib number is 2450. So you go in here, you find his bib in the drop down. And we use this so infrequently that I, I suppose it would be quicker just to type their bib in. Uh, but we use it so infrequently. And, and has he been, is he a DNF? No. What that means, DNF, of course, the answer did not finish. He finished and he's legal, so we'll leave him in there. Okay. Uh, let's say you got to switch somebody from race. You don't, you used to have to go back to the other screen and, and jump through all the hoops now just to, you know, find the bib. 2450, get the race that person's in. It'll tell you the boys 7 and 8. Um, and um, save changes. Now, only in Nordic will you do anything with start time. Because start time, Nordic involves waiver interval starts. That would be an individual delay. You'll never do that. You'll simply say, oh, Jonah didn't run the boys 7th, 8th. The coach entered in that and then screwed up and had him run var JV or varsity or JV. Make that, you know, save changes leave. That's all you have to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, Adjust times, not sure what that does, even I'll have to look into that. Individual delay, uh, here's where you change their individual delay. So this is almost meaningless, um, but 
because I mean these two winners, you know, kind of do the same thing individual delay and change race. I, I might look at, at eliminating that. Our refresh time just goes through and, and makes sure that all the subtraction has been done at their elapsed time minus race delay minus individual delay gives them their actual finish time. And you know, you don't always have that sorted by time especially in something like pursuit. So we can sort by time, we can sort by nor a normal sort, which is often time, but it's actually by default, it's place. So again, that's how to process results. Uh, I don't want to click over right here because it'll take them away. Uh, but hopefully, and that what, what that's designed to, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So, um, and then I'll call it an end to this one. But let's go to uh, enter results. And let's overwrite. And uh, so it, it takes all the stuff that's in the RFID and calculates their time. And no, so it does not at this point automatically update team scores. Now I might do that. We'll see. It does not automatically update team scores. Again, we're going to try to take as much of the processing of this of it for you. But again, that's kind of how you how you manage your cross-country meet results, okay? Um, and those are kind of, that's really kind of all you need to do. I mean, I, you know, I shouldn't say that. I mean, you know, you might also have to, you, you'll, you'll have to print it, and, and, but it's not a tough process, really. Uh, the process is, the, the place, the time it gets tough is when your coach runs a kid in a different race. So, you know, if, if you see any of these that say boys JV or, or something, you know that the coach ran the kid in the wrong race, and you just go in and you switch it. Okay. Uh, over here, insert finisher, delete finisher, fill open place. Again, you, the only ones you'll typically use there, if you have a no read, is an insert finisher. Um, delete, maybe. Most of that won't you won't be anything you'll need. This will be by far the one you use the most. So there's your there's your video on how to how to process uh, CC meet results. Okay. Thanks.